Sometimes I wonder if I've been too hard on best-selling author and motivational speaker Rachel Hollis. In the past, I've been known to say things like, Girl, wash your ass. Rachel, you're overhyped. Fuck off, Rachel. Now we all know what the worst self-help book I ever read is. Sing it with me, everyone. Girl, wash your ass. I keep seeing her fucking face everywhere. So I don't need to go too deep into why I hate girl wash your face so much. I have an entire 14 and a half minute review I did about my problems with this book. What is the worst book you've ever read that everyone else loved? Guys, I can't help myself. Everyone sing has to me, sing everyone. it with me. Girl, wash your ass. But I don't know if I should be saying those things because I'm also a writer just like she is and I've also been known to say things like hashtag writers support writers. Writing is already a hard enough thing to make into a career. Let the Silicon Valley tech CEOs look down upon us from their fat stacks of cash. We don't need to be looking down on each other. But in addition to believing that writers should support other writers, I also believe things like you know who doesn't count as a small business? Multi-level marketing marketing schemes. What's not wonderful about these events is multi-level marketing! Now Sammy, what does your hatred of pyramid schemes have to do with whether or not you've been too hard on the author Rachel Hollis? <laughs> that. What is this? A crossover episode? Yes, my friends of booktube, my mortal enemy Rachel Hollis got a gig speaking at a multi-level marketing conference. Now you might say something like, girl, collect your paycheck. Or, girl, take any speaking gigs you can possibly get because it's already hard enough to make a living in this world as a writer. And you would be right. Normally, I would agree and have no problem with that. If Rachel didn't say things like, You signed up for hard because you knew that on the other side of hard was magnificent. That's right. You knew that on the other side of hard was you getting financially free. Yes. To me, this shows that Rachel has moved on from body shaming women to full on scamming them. If you want to see more of what I mean by Rachel body shaming women, check out my Girl Wash Your Face review, which is linked in the cards. And when I say Rachel has been scamming women, I don't want you guys to worry because as the drama community would say, I will be pulling plenty of receipts. This receipt was actually from shipping all the Kickstarter pre-orders. I even have customs forms for my international orders. If you guys pre-ordered a plushie from my Kickstarter, let me know if you like it. But back to my original question. Have I been too hard on Rachel Hollis? Do I owe her an apology? I'll let the title of Rachel's new book speak to that for me. Yes, just like Rachel recommends, I am going to stop apologizing, girl. And I am going to start with you, Rachel. I am not going to apologize to you because I'm not sorry for shit. What's up my fellow small business supporters? I'm Savvy. If you're new to this channel, please remember to click the subscribe button because every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I have new videos coming out about books, writing tips, toys, art, dogs, and business. Today's video will cover a few of those different topics, mainly writing and books, but also business a little bit. But this particular video might feel a little different to you guys coming from me. I have heard from doing my assumptions video as well as just kind of hearing your guys' feedback and comments to me that I come off as a very chill booktuber. I think everyone has this perception of me that I'm like this cool kid who's just cruising around Chicago on my skateboard listening to Nirvana, which is true. If by that you mean that I waste time staring at YouTube videos of Dave Grohl's sexy ass beard and then get super drunk on shots of bourbon and then fall off of my skateboard in the middle of a parking lot. Basically, I seem to have given you guys some impression that I'm much cooler than I am. So let's just shatter the notion that I'm cool or chill or whatever. Let's shatter any notion that I'm not just as prone to rage-fueled drama or drama-fueled rage or coffee-fueled rants. Today, I will be spilling some piping hot tea which is stuffed full of laxatives to make all my postpartum friends out there lose that extra baby weight by making you shit out a hurricane of diarrhea equivalent in weight to your firstborn child is what I would say if I were trying to sell you on a multi-level marketing scheme. But I am an author who is here to entertain you, not to scam you. And that, my friends, is why I have chosen Rachel Hollis 
as my mortal author enemy, who promotes immoral essential oil enemas, is what I would say if I were a slam poet because that assonance was sick as hell. But I don't have any proof that Rachel promotes essential oil enemas of any kind, only beach body products, which are equally dangerous, which we will get into. But Savvy, why do you have a mortal author enemy when you are a writer who supports and respects other writers? Because Rachel doesn't support or respect other writers, which leads me into part one of this video. So before we delve into Rachel's pyramid-shaped web of lies, let's start by looking at Rachel as a writer. Generally, to be a writer, you only have to do two things. One, write, and two, not plagiarize. Pretty simple. You'd think if you have interesting ideas and things to say, and you want to be a writer who writes words that come from your head, you would be not stealing other people's words and ideas and trying to pass them off as your own. One would think! Now let me be clear, I know that no ideas are truly original. I believe in borrowing like an artist, that we should allow ourselves to be inspired by the works of others, to play off of similar tropes and themes and ideas. I support fan fiction, I support fair use. I mean, hell, look at how many other clips from other videos and things I include in my own YouTube videos. I support collaboration in the creative process. I support picking apart other works of art and putting them back together into something new. And I support the use of other people's words with credit. What I don't support is taking other people's quotes and putting them on your Instagram or in your book and pretending that they are your own quotes in a true Michael Scott fashion. Except Michael actually did give credit to Wayne Gretzky in a weird way, so Michael won Rachel zero. Here are some examples of Rachel taking other people's quotes putting them on her Instagram as her own, or even writing them in her book, which she then would sell to other people. But real quick, I would be remiss if I did not first give credit to those who alerted me to this problem, to my sources where I got this information. So I want to let you guys know that throughout this video, I will be referencing a video made by the YouTuber Kiki Chanel. Her video first alerted me to this problem when I was watching it the other day. I also am going to be referencing a BuzzFeed article that breaks down some of the quotes that Rachel has played and links to their original sources and where they're from, so I got a lot of information from there as well. I will link to all of these original sources in the description below so you guys can check those out as well and look right at the source if you want. First example, Rachel's Instagram has a quote on it that says, every year you close a new chapter in your story, please don't write the same one 75 times and call it a life. Pretty inspirational if you ask me. But apparently best-selling author and leadership expert Robin Sharma was the first one to say this in 2014 when he tweeted, don't live the same year 75 times and call it a life. I guess that's like slightly paraphrased, maybe, I don't know, I feel like if I submitted that on turnitin.com I would get in trouble. Next, this is a quote that Rachel posted not only on her Instagram but also in her new book, Girl Stop Apologizing. Ambition is not a dirty word. I agree, I'm quite ambitious. Okay, just to be clear, it seems that it's not clear whether or not that quote is from her book. On her Instagram she attributed it to herself and made it sound like it was from her book, but in her book it appears that the quote is actually ambition is not a bad thing in fact the definition is downright poetic a strong desire to do or achieve something typically requiring determination and hard work so that's slightly different so I don't really know what she's doing there but ambition is not, not a dirty word is actually a self-help book title by Deborah Condren who is a different self-help book author than Rachel so she just kind of lifted that right out of there there's a ton of these so I don't want to waste your time going through every single one but I will finish off the BuzzFeed article with this one that says, don't make yourself small so others feel more comfortable. Apparently this quote was actually written in the book The Balanced Mom Raising Your Kids Without Losing Yourself by Bria Simpson, whose quote technically said don't shrink yourself to make others feel more comfortable. Rachel says don't make yourself small so others feel more comfortable, so she like changed the word shrink to make small, which I guess counts as a paraphrase? I'm not sure. Like, again, I'm not saying this is necessarily legally plagiarism, just it's like kind of weird. And then I looked at Rachel's Instagram recently and saw that she has changed this quote again slightly more and posted it twice more on her Instagram, which is, don't downplay what you've achieved because it makes others feel uncomfortable, which I'm okay with that paraphrase of it because it's different enough that she's like not talking about 
making yourself smaller or shrinking yourself. She's talking about downplaying your achievements. We can all word the same ideas in different ways, but she's posted this twice recently, once on May 22nd and once on July 9th. So basically this has been going on for a long time. It would be one thing, it would still not be an acceptable thing, but it would be one thing if she were just stealing from like other successful leadership coaches and self-help book authors who are equally as wealthy and famous as her, which I don't know, I haven't read most of those books, so I don't know if those people are like, more or less famous than her or whatever but it would be one thing if she were just like ripping off successful people which you know it still wouldn't be okay it still wouldn't even be remotely ethical but i think it's another thing entirely to be ripping off smaller writers if you guys have seen my author tube book haul or my kickstarter rewards book haul or my indie book box unboxings or anything like that you know that i love to support smaller authors i love to support smaller creators in every single video i post i say don't forget to support small businesses i am a small business owner i support that 100 percent I support writers who are just starting out, I support independent authors, all of that. So I ask you, if you are a big, successful, millions of copies selling, best-selling author, what is the worst thing you can do to a smaller author? Leave them a bad review? No. That's just free speech. Plus, all reviews help the algorithm. Price, promote, and market your book better than theirs? No, that's just healthy competition in a free market. Steal their content and pass it off as your own? Yeah, that's a dick move. Don't do that. But of course, that is exactly what Rachel did. While I was researching Rachel Hollis's plagiarized quotes um, that were in her books, I saw a post on a Facebook group. Um, this Facebook page was called The Outnumbered Mother by Amy Hunter, and apparently this is a mom blog that this woman Amy Hunter runs. She posted about the fact that Rachel Hollis, who at the time of her posting this, which was um, in December of 2018, Girl, Wash Your Face was the second best-selling book on Amazon, according to this post at least, and she was like, Rachel Hollis is plagiarizing my work. She's plagiarizing the work of many of her friends. So apparently Rachel runs another Instagram called Motivation for Mamas. And on that page, she stole this person's meme that says, sorry, we're 500 hours late, but my toddler insists on buckling his car seat by himself now. That's kind of funny. Like, I assume if you're a, a parent, that's probably hilarious. Like, I've never seen a child try to buckle a car seat, but I assume it's, it's <laughs> annoying. But that's what this person posted. And then what shows up on this motivation for mama's page is the exact same quote, but with their at symbol and their watermark on it. Like they passed it off as their own. Yeah, that's a new low is to steal content from mom bloggers who are generally, they're usually not best selling authors. Usually bloggers are either authors who are starting out or they're authors who are making a smaller income based on ad revenue from their blogs or merch revenue or things like that. As a smaller author myself and a vlogger here on YouTube, I know how hard it is to make money in this kind of industry, in this kind of world, and to have someone who's already way more successful than you just stealing that from you, that's absolutely heartbreaking. I mean, I guess that kind of goes along with uh, pyramid scheming, so we'll get to that. But for now, I have a joke for you. A motivational speaker, a self-help book writer, an author who steals other people's content, an Instagram influencer who empowers hashtag boss babes, an entrepreneur with a very hazy business mission, all named Rachel Hollis, walk into a convention center. What are they there for? A pyramid scheme summit. Which leads us to... So this is going to focus on a multi-level marketing company called Beachbody and a convention that Rachel was recently at for that. The Beachbody Summit was held from July 11th to 14th, which at my time of filming this, that was about two weeks ago, and it was held in Indianapolis, which is about three hours away from me where I am in Chicago. And so for some context, I'm going to give you guys a quick quick breakdown of what all of this means. Beachbody is a multi-level marketing company that sells weight loss shakes and exercise regimens for the most part. From what I've heard, their workout routines are actually pretty good. So like credit where credit's due, but their coaching program is a borderline pyramid scheme. I say a borderline pyramid scheme because I don't want to straight up call it a pyramid scheme and get in trouble for slander. In fact, let me go on the record real quick and clarify that I think that Rachel is borderline plagiarizing. Like in part one, I think she was borderline plagiarizing. I'm not here to try to accuse her of the actual legal crime of plagiarism. I'm just here to say that I think she was stealing other people's ideas. But I'm sure in real life she found some kind of legal loophole just like the loophole she found when she was masquerading as a 19-year-old virgin. My virginity went from technical 
to non-existent. What is technically a virgin? Are you saying that you were using the poop hole loophole? I was right! You do need to! Wash your ass! So I can't say for certain that she legally plagiarized. I'm just saying that ethically or morally, based on my own standards as a writer, it seems like she didn't really come up with all the ideas herself. But back to Beachbody, the borderline pyramid scheme, it's not legally classified as a pyramid scheme because in order to be legally a pyramid scheme, which is illegal and you get shut down and get in all kinds of trouble, you have to not have an actual product. You just have to be taking monetary investments from one person and paying them off to another person in a pyramid-like structure. This company has a product they're selling, so they're able to classify themselves as like a direct sales company. Like they technically sell these workout programs and these shakes. But like deep down, I think everyone knows the real money comes from recruiting other people to become your downline and sell under you and be like the next person below you in the pyramid. So people, they basically sign up for Beachbody to become coaches. They sell workout programs and shakes to their customers and they sign people up to be other coaches under them and then they get a percentage of the commissions from the people under them and then those people get a percentage of the commissions from the people that they sign up under them and this goes on and on and on until the world runs out of Beachbody coaches and or humans. Can people actually make money from selling Beachbody? So to find that out, I looked up Beachbody's official income disclosure statement, which shows that during the 2018 calendar year, 74% of coaches earned an average of $402 per year. $402. Then the Beachbody income disclosure statement hits us with this cute little disclaimer right here. The earnings listed below do not include any expenses incurred by a coach in operating and growing their business, which can vary wildly. Any expenses? So that... $402 a year was revenue, not profit. Excuse me? I looked on Beachbody's website, which explains that once you sign up as a coach, you are charged $15.95 per month just to keep your business active. It costs you $16 a month to work for Beachbody. And if you work for them, you'll be one of the coaches who on average brings in $402 per year. So coaches on average are actually bringing in like half of that $402 per year because about like $200-ish is spent just keeping your account active. And that's not including any of your other costs, like purchasing their shakes to actually drink yourself, which they encourage you to do because they want you to be an example of the weight loss you're doing to other people. So you're buying their shakes to drink yourself, you're buying their workout programs to actually do yourself. So that that cost doesn't factor in at all. Neither do any other business operating costs like marketing costs or advertising costs, like none of that factors in. So all of those costs are going on top of that website fee. You're only bringing in, in revenue, $402 as an average, which that's not the median, that's the average, so who knows if the median's probably actually lower because the people up top tend to bring in like the big bucks. Now I'm not a gambling kind of man, but if I were, I'd say that people are actually losing money in this. So anyway, a few weeks ago, Beachbody had their annual summit. It's like a professional development conference where everyone goes to learn how to get into better shape and exercise better by climbing up a pyramid. So I looked online and the tickets for this conference generally go from like $125 to $295 per ticket. Like that's the fee to get into this conference. So not only are people paying monthly for the privilege of selling these products, paying for the products themselves, but they are also paying to go to this summit that is held by the company they supposedly work for when they're already making less than minimum wage, if anything, per year. Not only do they have to pay for their own hotel and travel expenses to get there, but they have to pay to actually get into the conference, which is what Beachbody's corporate is going to be making money off of. But Savvy, what does this have to do with Rachel Hollis, the girl who taught me how to wash my face? Our girl, Rachel, was this year's Beachbody Summit keynote speaker. She stood up in front of a crowd of tons of people and gave them a motivational speech about how to keep on doing Beachbody. Rachel Hollis is officially scamming women. Thankfully, many people recorded her performing the speech up on stage, so I have some clips that I can show you guys. I will link to the source in the description below, but I want to give a quick disclaimer. For any people who posted videos of this, please do not 
spam them. Do not leave hateful comments to them. In fact, just probably don't interact at all because you don't know them and like that's weird and creepy to do. Just like don't do that. Just because someone attended this conference does not mean they're a bad person and it does not mean that I condone anybody giving them any kind of problems. In fact, a lot of people who get involved in MLMs are victims rather than villains. I included the link to cite my source because that's more than Rachel ever did. But please do not send hate to anyone involved in anything that I mentioned in this video, including Rachel Hollis. So let's now take a look at Rachel's speech. I love the fact that I was presenting to you because I tend to think of the Beachbody coaches in my community as high achievers. Beachbody coaches as high achievers. I think the income disclosure statement put that one to rest, Rachel. And, and this is especially for those of you who are in the middle of a hard season. Who's in the middle of a hard season, either personally or professionally? I think it's safe to say everyone's in the middle of a hard season if we go by the income disclosure statement. Anyone have to go really well in the beginning and then now you're struggling? Alright Rachel, this is almost too easy. Why are you giving me points that I can easily review with the income disclosure statement every single time? You knew that on the other side of hard was you getting financially free. Yes. You knew that on the other side was hard is, is you being a leader. Okay. This is where the real problems start. Rachel is basically saying here, you chose this path because you want to be financially free. You chose this path of working more than 40 hours a week to make less than minimum wage if you were working 40 hours a week, and it's because you want to be financially free. This is a problem because a lot of people go into multi-level marketing companies thinking it's going to bring them financial freedom. I know people that this has happened to in my own life. I know people who have been living in low income circumstances who have been living below the poverty line and who are saying, okay, I need to take this on because I need to make extra income. I need to break myself out of this. But they end up spending more and more money and getting greater and greater in debt as we just saw from looking at how Beachbody's income disclosure statement is working and how much people are actually bringing in versus how much they have to spend. So the idea of financial freedom is completely a myth, except for the people up at the very top of the pyramid who likely joined years and years ago. You are not going to become financially free in this. You're just not. It's a lie. And the fact that she's promoting this and saying this to these people, she's like, she's somebody they look up to, somebody who has successfully earned a ton of money, who has made a successful career for herself and is earning a lot. And they're like, yes, she can do it. I can do it. And she's saying I can stay in this company. She's giving like the worst advice. She's outright lying to these women. What she does has no effect on you. <laughs> Unless she joins your downline. Now this quick little story from Rachel doesn't really have anything to do with multi-level marketing at all, but just like listen to this real quick and tell me what you think. I went into labor and I was in labor for 52 hours. Thank you, Jackson. Have you ever seen those videos of a rocket ship taking off? Like the old time-lapse footage where the rocket ship is just like slowly taking off, but as it's taking off, things are just breaking off the sides, flying into the air, and parachute back into the ocean, broken, broken, never to be used again! <laughs> hey. That story made me sad. You know why? Because she told it beautifully because she told it with so much expression, because she connected to the audience on such an amazing level, because she did a bomb ass job relating to people telling that story. Rachel is a fucking fantastic motivational speaker. She is amazing at public speaking. She's good at what she does. And it just crushes me that she's not using that power for good. That she says she's using her power to uplift other women and to motivate them. But we can see the hard evidence here that she is encouraging women to stay in a program, in a company that is financially taking advantage of them. She is not practicing what she preaches. And it just kills me because it's like she has this skill. She has this power where she can connect with other people. And she's just squandering it to make money. And that just kills me. Like, that's, that's sad. She's good at this. She could be doing so much more. They're twice the size. They're like a phone book. In your mouth. Millennials, a phone book. <laughs> 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 All right, Rachel, you're like, what, like 34, 
35, 36, something like that. I think you might even be technically a millennial yourself. She just constantly acts like she's like this guru, like she's the super wise person who knows all this stuff that we don't when really she's like not that old. She's pretty young actually. So like, she's like millennials. A phone. Like, girl, you grew up with the internet too. Don't lie. And then you get to blame everybody else for why your business isn't where it should be. You get to blame everybody else for a year from now when you're like, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this okay okay rachel you're a business owner i'm a business owner we both know you're lying on this one am i really as a small business owner who barely makes enough to get by on in a year gonna sit here and explain to our best-selling author with millions of followers our girl rachel the concept of what an oversaturated market is do we think that rachel does not understand supply and demand the very basis of any economic study of any kind, like for real, you get to blame everyone else for why your business isn't where it should be. Yeah, because when you're in an MLM, you really do blame everyone else because you recruit your own competition. There are no territories now that we have the internet. So like, yeah, back in the day when we had like the Mary Kay or the Avon lady walking down the street, like she sold to just that neighborhood, maybe made a little bit of side cash. It was all good. Nowadays, with these Beachbody coaches selling on the internet, they can sell to anyone. And so, then they're encouraged to recruit other people who are then selling the exact same products, oversaturating the market with certain products, and now there's tons of people selling them, and there isn't the same level of demand to keep up for that because the people that you know you're encouraged to recruit so you can't sell them because they now have the same product. In this business, it literally is because of other people that your business isn't doing well. It's because there are too many other people in it. Rachel, do you not know what an oversaturated market is? I mean, you're an Instagram influencer, so. <laughs> and you get to say all the reasons that you're not here anymore is because you didn't have the support. Because you didn't know what you're. You know what? Because she went to a bigger city than I live. She has more oh, people I heard than that. she can. You know what? The size of your audience and your customers actually matters a lot, so. I think that like Rachel's giving the opposite of business advice. I don't get what she's doing. But people who do have more people to buy from them are gonna do better. And like, yeah, maybe that means you need to build up your audience, build up your following, whatever. But like, am I wrong in thinking she's being willfully ignorant here and just like telling people straight up like lies? Like, am, like what? Knowledge isn't power. Applied knowledge is power. All right, I googled this quote and I saw it attributed to both Eric Thomas and to Dale Carnegie in a slightly different form. So, Rachel, I believe that quote is plagiarized. Not to say you can't use other people's bits of wisdom in your speech, because maybe you are a better public speaker than they are. But, you give credit. It's that simple. For example, watch me say this. Knowledge isn't power. Applied knowledge is power. That quote was said by Eric Thomas, and then it was said by Rachel Hollis. Ta-da! Who is someone who is actively judging them for being in this room right now? We need to talk about judgment. Because this is starting to get serious, actually. I know that a big tactic that MLMs use is emotional manipulation and isolation of people from their family and their friends and people who love them. There are just countless stories out there of people who are like, I joined this MLM, I thought I was gonna make some money, they encourage me to reach out to my friends and family and constantly try to sell to them. My friends and family got annoyed with me and asked me not to sell them things. I told this to my upline. They said, they're just jealous of your success. They're your haters, they're whatever. And they basically brainwash you into trying to believe that anyone who doesn't buy from you is out to get you, which is ridiculous. I have a business. I don't sell products to everyone I know. I've told everyone I know about my products, about my stuffed animals and my book series that I created myself, not bought from someone else. I tell people about them and people are like, hey, yeah, I can't buy it. I'm like, cool, what else is up? Like, I'm not here to utilize my friendships to make sales, but in an MLM, they tell you like, yes, yeah, sell to your friends and family, which sure, like, let them know about the fact that you're selling something, but if they say no, that's not a sign that they're a hater or that they don't want you to be successful. It's just a sign that like, they don't actually want that product. And like, if you're a business owner, you should be able to learn to sell products to people who want them. And so when Rachel talks here about judgment, the form of judgment in an MLM often comes 
from friends and family members who are worried about you, who are seeing that you're getting too deep into the group mentality. Because the fact is for a lot of multi-level marketing companies, they target women who, you know, maybe just had their first kid, who are struggling financially, who are single parents, who are in a lower income bracket, who don't have a lot of resources to fall back on. They, you know, treat you like you're now part of this family, you're part of this group, you're our sister, you're whatever. Kind of like cults do, but that's neither here nor there. And then when your family judges you for it and says, hey, maybe you shouldn't be in this, generally they're judging you as a warning, as like, hey, we're worried about you and we don't think what you're doing is beneficial. And then Rachel's basically saying like, fuck that judgment, just do your thing. Rachel is promoting the same tactics here that MLMs use to isolate people from their family. Because once people are isolated from their family and friends who no longer want contact with them because they've just turned into like the sales robot machine, then when they inevitably lose a bunch of money, go into a bunch of debt, they don't have people to fall back on and they end up staying in the business and going deeper and deeper into debt. That doesn't just sound like a cult. That sounds like an abusive relationship. Like, that's fucked up. Right? People are gonna say no. People might judge you. But this isn't their dream. This is your dream. This is the thing that you decided to do for you. And if you decided to do for you, then you cannot let anybody else Holy shit, okay, you can't let others talk you out of it. She's she's actively encouraging these, oh my god. You know what I hear most often from people in these industries? What they want to do with the money that all the bajillions of dollars they want to make? The number one thing I hear, I want to take my family on summer vacation. It's the number one thing I hear. I want to take my family on summer vacation. Who knows what that feels like? To watch one family and another family and another family going on vacation and you sit home again this year. The people who are judging you are not the people who are gonna have to watch another family go to Hawaii again this summer when that's all you've ever wanted to do. Yes, they are. They are those people. For the most part, they're your friends and family. They are the people who will be going on vacation with you or whatever. Like, they are people who generally could benefit from you not losing so much money. Often it's like people's spouses, people's kids, people's parents, their siblings who are like, help, someone I love and care about got sucked into this company and now they've been tricked into giving them all this money, what do we do? This is just sad at this point and I'm incredibly disappointed that Rachel is using her powers as an author with a platform, with a voice, someone that people listen to, with an amazing ability for public speaking, she's using this to hurt people. Like when I read Girl Wash Your Face, I had a lot to make fun of it with because I was like, the way she phrases things is kind of weird. She's kind of judgy of other women even though she preaches not judging each other. This is next level. This is her encouraging women to go at something harder that is actively harming them. Maybe, maybe in her heart, she believes that this is a valid way to make money. But since she owns a business, since she made her money herself, I doubt she believes that because anyone with any business sense knows that this doesn't work. In conclusion, Rachel's scamming people. She's scamming them by taking other people's ideas and passing them off as her own. And she's scamming them by encouraging them to stay in MLMs even though she's just taking a public speaking fee as her own personal gain. Rachel, you may say that we should stop apologizing. I'll admit I haven't read the new book and I do think that in general women do need to stay confident in themselves and not be sorry for who they are and I'm sure that's what you're going at with it. That like women should be like unashamedly themselves unless they're fat according to Rachel. But Rachel, when you fucked up the best thing to do is to own it. In the meantime, I will say that, girl, you do need to apologize. You need to apologize to everyone who's losing money in Beachbody. You need to apologize to all the people whose quotes you stole and passed off as your own. You need to put your abilities to, for public speaking to good use to actually start helping people like you claimed you wanted to do. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and maybe also learned from it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I know this video might be a little more controversial because normally I'm not here to just be like, this other author sucks, they're doing terrible things. But when I saw that like 
two, like the video I made on Girl Wash Your Face is like my biggest book review video I've ever made. It has the most views and I had a lot of fun making it when I saw that that author was now participating in multi-level marketing, which is a thing that has caused me a lot of trouble in my life. You can watch my full video about why I hate multi-level marketing. Basically it has to do with the fact that it's undermining me as a small business owner and that I've seen people in my life get sucked into it when they were in financial struggles and it, it kills me to see what happens to people as a result. Please let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. I'm happy to have a discussion on anything and I really appreciate you guys watching this. I will see you guys again soon. In the meantime, don't forget to support legitimate small businesses.